Hello YouTube, this is Ant Plantation and today I'll be informing you that I am doing a new series called Tropical Pitcher Plant Species Overview which I'll be going over unique species that is cool or fun to grow and I'll be teaching you guys how to grow it and all the culture and how it was discovered and basically everything about that species. And this is my first episode of this series and I will be doing the Penfees Rob Kentyai this plant is one of my favorite species and I am excited to tell you guys everything about this species and how to grow it. So first things first, the Penfees Rob Kentlii or Rob Kentley's pitcher plant is native to the island of Mindanao of Philippines. This is a carnivorous pitcher plant species which means that it can eat insects or and also can digest insects. This species is special because it has the biggest peristome of its genus. The pitchers can reach up to 40 centimeters big and 10 centimeters wide, which is quite a big pitcher. It's one of the biggest in its genus of Nepenthes, which is a tropical pitcher plant. And also, this species is very big and does not produce upper pitchers. The leaves could get up to, um, especially the flower stalks could get up to almost two meters so on some male plants and this species is quite easy to grow and I'll be going over care tips the only problem with this species I'll say that um, it's probably space because this species is a very big plant and you need to get um, proper sized um, greenhouse or um, grow space and that is the main problem because this species could get huge so I'll just quickly show you guys my personal plant, my baby little baby in the Penfees, Rob Kentlii that I got from Brad's greenhouse. So this is my personal Nepenthes Rob Kentlii, the one that I have. This is a little baby plant that I got from Brad's greenhouse um, around half a year ago. And it is doing very well. This is the newest pitcher. Um, quite a big size. Very tubby, like very thick, nice texture, um, beautiful, um, you can already sort of see the big thick lips, um, beautiful coloration. If you look inside, you can sort of see the nice speckles. Oh yeah, Bastiana cross Vogelii, photobombing here. Nice, also nice beautiful pitcher plant. Leave that aside, we're not here for that. And yeah, very beautiful plant. This um, newest pitcher, beautiful coloration. Love them when they're just open. And let's move on with the video. So basically how this plant was discovered is Robert Cantley, the owner of Borneo Exotics, um, he was collecting the seeds of black truncata, so-called black truncata, but it is actually Nepenthes Rob Cantlii. And later on, um, botanist Martin Creek concluded that this is a new species. And that's how it was discovered. And now let's get to the care tips for the species. Now we're back to basics. So for watering, it needs to be relatively pure, um, around 100 parts per million or total dissolved salt, TDS. And 100, the maximum amount of um, saltiness of the water it can handle is around 160 parts per million. So if you want to test your water, you can just go to a local aquarium or just order a TDS meter online or yeah, TDS meter online and measure your water quality. The lower it is, the better it is. But if it's zero, like absolute no salt and mineral contents at all, then it, it might not be the best. So the best number is around 60 or 40. Those are pretty good. Um, 100 is okay, but uh, over 180, it's a bit too much. So keep that in mind. Generally, tap water won't work. Um, filtered water definitely uh, works better. And for sunlight, this species is quite sun loving compared to some other species. Um, it can handle more sun. The leaf doesn't go um, red as easily as truncata. And give it, if you're on a windowsill, like partial sun during hot days, shade it a little bit. So like diffused sunlight will work. 
and around six hours, six to eight hours of sunlight. But make sure the sunlight is not like scorching, burning sun. Also, um, humidity is an issue as well. 50% um, is probably the lowest I'll go for, but if it's lower, it can handle it. It won't kill the plant at all, but it's best to grow a healthy plant. Keep the humidity around 70%. And for soil, use long fiber sphagnum moss. Um, there's no other soil type that I can think of that works. Um, and make sure there's no fertilizer. And one thing about sphagnum moss is commonly, it's make sure it's true sphagnum moss. Some species, like some moss companies sell sphagnum moss, but it's not actually real sphagnum moss, and that could kill your plant. So be careful about the soil. And for repotting, um, if it grows out of it, like if it grows too big and it's too big for this pot, just repot it. Um, don't just try not to dis disturb the roots that much. It doesn't really like it, and just repot it to a bigger pot. Um, tend to avoid repotting larger, mature plants because it really sets them back. L younger plants are um, easier to repot, and that's pretty much it for the basic needs. Now, where can you grow this plant? You can grow it on a quite a large windowsill, um, south-facing if you're in the northern hemisphere, south-facing, um, east-facing, southeast, southwest, west. Those are all okay, but protect it from um, direct uh, hot sun. Morning sun is okay, but hot afternoon sun, um, protect it. It might give the plant burns. So just shade it a little bit, put shade cloth or like um, put the blinds down a little bit, just semi-shade will work. And in greenhouse, that the best place to grow this guy is in a large greenhouse with a heat, large heated greenhouse with lots of humidity and good lighting. This guy can get big. And in terrariums, when it's younger, you can grow in a terrarium, but once it gets bigger, you, you got to move it to like a mini grow tent, tent or like a mini greenhouse. So in conclusion, you can grow it in a greenhouse, you can grow it in a grow tent, you can grow it in a um, little terrarium when it's younger, or like a glass tank when it's younger, but move it out when it gets grows bigger, and you can grow it on a large sunny windowsill with adequate humidity. And that's pretty much it for that. So in conclusion, this species is a beautiful species to grow. It got beautiful big peristome and um, crimson red reddish pictures with blotchy paint painted almost painted insides. Very beautiful, um, very rigid peristome, big plant, definitely worth it. Um, if you can find one for sale, definitely take your chance at it. And be sure to like this video, subscribe, and turn on the bell because I'll be uploading more on cool Nepenthes slash tropical pitcher plant species. So this is, this is Amp's plantation. And yeah, thanks for watching.